everyone, welcome to Marika Creations. Today I'm so excited because we are turning trash into cash. I am joining a collab. You can see them on screen here, amazing creators. David at David Owen Creates, Yelena at Blondie Next Door, Annie at Indie Annie Jones. I have links down in my description to the channels, along with a link to the playlist of this collab. So we're literally taking trash and turn it into something that we could actually possibly sell. You tell me if they turn out to be sellable or not. So stay tuned for this. My first DIY I will make a basket and I will take this small fruit crate. It's been in my corner where I spray paint as a riser, but now I'm going to make it pretty. So I start by spray painting the whole thing to unify it a little bit. One coat of a matte black spray paint. While my crate is drying, I will go on with this wrinkled up packing paper that I got when I ordered stuff on the internet not long ago. So I flatten it out, sort of, so I know how wide it is, like that. And then I go ahead and cut strips, three equal parts out of this packing paper. So what I'm going to do here with these paper strips is to braid them. So I will put my strips together at the top and staple them together like that. Put something heavy on it and then start braiding. And it's a good thing that it's uh, wrinkled up because it looks so much better. It looks like a rustic uh, farmhouse braid. So I do that with this piece of paper and then I had uh, two smaller ones that I will braid as well. Same fashion. And when I get to the end of my braid, I will just put the ends together and staple them together like that. My crate has dried, looking good I think. And now it's time to put my braid onto my crate. Start with the top so I get that as I want it to look. Attach it with some hot glue at the ends. And then I need to go back and put uh, tabs of hot glue in the middle as well. And I work my way around my crate. Soon it's time for the second row and I try to make a nice transition to the second row there. And that works, more hot glue, just press it into place. And sadly this braid was just a bit too short to go all the way around so I have a tiny bit left to fill in there but I just take one of the other braids and I staple it where I need to cut it off cut in between the staples and just press it into place and voila we have the basket ready now I need a handle for my basket so I take one of the shorter braids that looks good doesn't it so I need to cut it to size and just hot glue it into place. The short ends like that. And here as well, staple before I cut it. 
so I won't untangle it and just hot glue it into place. Now it's time to embellish my basket with spring flowers. I take two plants from Ikea and some garlands. Let it hang over the sides like that. A few fern pieces and then as a final touch some white tulips. And my spring basket is ready. And here it is in my living area looking very much like a spring basket. I think it's hard to tell that it was once just trash don't you think so tell me what do you think of my creation is it sell worthy is it trash to cash let me know in the comments for my second diy i will use this pringles tube and turn it into a steampunk spring planter. I will use these lids from my plastic test tubes as well. So first thing, I'm going to open it up like that. So I find a round shape and just mark a half a circle, turn it around and another half circle. And then I just join my circles with a ruler like that. And then I take my box cutter and cut out the opening. So this is how it looks, the opening for my planter. I have a lid on one side and I want it to look the same on the other side so I need to attach a lid on the other side as well with the help of some hot glue. As you can see it's quite wobbly and that's where these test tube lids come in. They will act as feet for my planter. So I will just put some hot glue on them and press them into place like you see me do here. two and two together so they look like that nice and stable and now I take some half beads that I will put on each side to mimic bolts and um, nail heads on my steel pipe sort of <laughs> can you visualize that you will see on one side there and the same on the other side on the ends I will put these metal discs in the center like that and a half bead right in the center of that disc like so and the same on the other side And all around the opening I will put a strand of uh, tiny half beads as well like you see me do here now I'm putting on a base coat of a matte black spray paint and I applied two coats and let it dry in between the coats. Now time for the fun part to make it look more industrial, more worn, a bit of steampunk. So I'm dry brushing here with a, a white acrylic where I see fit. And then I take my creamy golden color and instead of uh, mimicking rust, I will make small details around the edges and a little bit here and there where I see fit with this creamy gold color.
If you're new to my channel, hi! I am Marika and on this channel I do lots of DIYs, thrift flips, trash to treasure, a renovation of my home, some pottery, some painting, anything creative really. Please join me. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and join my YouTube family. And then I go over it again with some white acrylic, dabbing it on, just rubbing off the excess and go all over my piece. Now it's time to plant something. So I have two hyacinths that I put in a plastic bag because I can't put them right in my Pringles tube. It won't take the humidity. So I cut it to size and press it into my pipe here like that. But you can still see a bit of plastic and that I will cover here with some reindeer moss. And here it is, a couple of weeks later, my hyacinths are starting to bloom, looking pretty, I think. What do you think of uh, my planter? Is it steampunk? Is it industrial? Or does it still look like a Pringles tube? Tell me, is it cell worthy? You let me know. Is it trash to cash? Let me know in the comments. For my third and final DIY, I will use this shredded newspaper, also received as packing material. So I just press a lot into this bucket and pour hot water on top of it. One can was not enough, I think I went for three or four cans and then I just let it soak. Press it down into the water, my paper, fill it up a little bit more with the, these shreds as well and let it soak. After a couple of hours, I took my hand mixer and wanted to mush it. It was quite tough and my hand mixer it was not a good choice for that, but I managed to make it into smaller pieces. And then I let it soak for several more hours and then I went in and uh, took the threads from one bucket to another and just squeezed out the water. Just a piece of advice, squeeze hard because this is my first time to do papier mache this way so I did not know how dry I could um, make it but take it from me squeeze hard take as much water away as possible and then i take this white glue like half a bottle to my paper mush like that i haven't even told you yet but i will make a paper mushy bowl quite a large bowl And I just mix it around with my hands. Here I noticed that I still had a lot of excess water. So I tried to pour some out and um, squeeze it again and uh, get rid of as much water as possible, like you see me do here. Now I have my salad bowl here and I have covered it with plastic so my paper mache won't stick to it and I'm just molding my bowl here and I took quite a lot, a lot more than I should have I think. I thought it's quite a big bowl, I don't want it to be paper thin. <laughs> so I'm just working my way around the bowl to cover it completely and then I set it aside to dry but big bowl with a lot of water still in it 
Here you can see it. I had put it out in the sun. I did that during the day to let it dry more quickly. So I let it sit there. That did not help. So after three days, I took it and put it in my oven on just 50 degrees Celsius and put it there for three hours and another four hours. And I continued to do that for another three days. And finally, after a six day period of drying, it is dry. I'm so happy. Once the surface was dry enough on the outside, I removed the salad bowl. I noticed that it cracked a little bit, but I will fix that here with some hot glue in the crack and just press it together with something heavy. And then I will take some plaster and put on the inside and outside and on the rim to cover that crack completely and let it dry overnight. Can you see how thick my ball is in certain places at least? No wonder it didn't dry for that long period of time. I'm so glad I had the patience to wait for it to dry because it was all worth it in the end. So now it's uh, dry and no crack. Perfect. So it's time to put on a base coat of color. So I have mixed up some brown, some white and a tiny bit of black and put it on, on the outside at first. And I noticed it's quite on the pink side, isn't it? And I didn't like that. So I decided to mix in some more white and some more black to get a more grayish color as you can see here when i'm painting the inside of my ball so i cover the ball completely and then i went over it with my hair dryer because i did not want my papier mache to soak in that humidity from the paint now I take some different acrylic paint. I have copper, gold, black and white and also that base coat color and I will dry brush my bowl. Just put it on as I see fit. Start a little lighter then I go heavier and heavier until I am happy with the result. If you like this video and videos like this, hit that like button and the subscribe button of course for more inspirational videos. My aim is to post one or two videos per week, so hit that notification bell as well so you are notified every time I upload a new video. My plaster mended crack had a bit of a different texture. You could still see there was something else going on there. So I decided to put a heavy coat of gold acrylic on there to get sort of a gold vein in my stone ball. I kept playing around with my colors until I was happy with the result. And the result you can see right here, sitting on my side table, looking pretty, I think, with just some greenery hanging over the rim of the pool. So tell me, what do you think of my creations today? Did you have a favorite? Let me know in the comments. But first of all, let me know if this bowl is sellable or not. Trash to cash? let me know in the comments so now it's time to head on over to my description box and hit that link to the playlist of this collaboration for more trash to cash inspiration thank you so very much for watching see you soon again in my next one until then take care bye